Goodbye. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Angela Cox. Good afternoon. Today marks the beginning of the end of lockdown measures in Australia. The Prime Minister and Premiers have agreed on a three-stage thawing of our virus shutdown, progressively opening much of our economy by mid-year. National Cabinet met this morning and backed the plan, even though leaders acknowledge it does involve risk. Live to Tim Lester in Canberra for us. Tim, take us through what will open and when. Well, Ange, it will vary state to state. Now, Premier Berejiklian has already rejected the pace with which Queensland, South Australia and Western Australia have begun to thaw their measures, but all states now have a national plan to guide them. In this plan, we walk before we run. Stage one, gentle steps in May. The limit on guests in the home rises to five, elsewhere groups up to ten. That's the limit for property auctions, cafes and the like. Food courts still closed, though shopping centres open if they have a COVID safe plan. School and childcare return in May. I'm looking forward to seeing children back in classrooms learning. Stage two picks up the pace in June. Non-work gatherings up to 20 people. Likely still not enough for pubs and clubs so many stay closed. Recreational travel interstate begins. Caravan parks and camping reopen. We don't want to lose the control we've got. We want to make sure that outbreaks that occur are managed and controlled. There will be outbreaks, there will be more cases, there will be setbacks. Stage three has the economy running in July. 100 people allowed to gather. Businesses that rely on crowds can open, but must record patrons' contacts. Interstate travel is allowed, though most overseas travel likely still locked indefinitely. Here, the PM cites Treasury advice that 850,000 Australians now relying on government payments will no longer need them. It's people have been stood down going back into their full employment. Tim, there's a risk these measures will cause a spike in COVID cases. What's the government saying about that? Well, Ange, it says to expect this spike, but also to expect that they will be able to contain them as they happen. Now, National Cabinet plans to assess each of those three monthly changes about three weeks into the cycle, so could slow down if needed, but it does seem the mood from now for the leaders is keep moving ahead. Outbreaks are not a reason to slow things down. Outbreaks are going to happen, but uh, we've got to get out from under the doona uh, at some time, and if not now, then when? <laughs> Through March and April, the emphasis has all been on the health measures. Now, the Prime Minister and other leaders are trying to wake the comatose economy. Ange? OK, thanks so much, Tim. Despite the Prime Minister's roadmap here in New South Wales, the Premier's standing firm, refusing to lift any more restrictions just yet. Chris Reasons following the story. Chris, it's going to be a quiet Mother's Day across the state on Sunday. Well, Ange, New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian made it painfully clear even before the Prime Minister had announced his roadmap plans that this state wasn't going to make any changes this weekend, insisting that New South Wales would decide itself when those lockdown laws would be relaxed or changed. But it's a position that's likely to cause a lot of confusion and uncertainty for so many people statewide. Do you follow the Prime Minister's advice or her advice? Of course, legally, it's hers, but there'll be some some that hear one message and not the other. Nothing, just to be clear, nothing has changed for New South Wales this Mother's Day weekend. No visits of any more than two adults to anyone's home. Now here's a little bit of what she had to say again four hours before she had her National Cabinet meeting with the Prime Minister. Any decisions that come out of National Cabinet won't be applied in New South Wales over the weekend. So please stick to the existing rules and please make sure we make the most of a very special day for all of our special mums. The Premier is of course keen to keep the COVID numbers down and there was more good data on that today. Of 9,400 tests, just four positives across the state. One of those was sadly at Newmarch. The staffer we reported yesterday as today the facility came under new management. The independent advisor Andrew Kincaid started 
starting work, a forced appointment by the Aged Care Commission after 16 deaths there. They've also now written to all families with a contact phone number and email to address any more problems. That's a small gesture, I know, but it will be a massive relief for many of those families as they decide whether to leave their loved ones there or take them out. Ange, back to you. To breaking news now, three NRL players have been stood down after refusing to get the flu vaccine. Peter Fagan is at Moore Park. Peter, a shock move from league bosses. Well, in a huge development this afternoon, the Queensland Government has confirmed that three NRL players have been stood down for refusing a flu jab. Those three players are Bryce Cartwright, Brian Kelly and Nathan Peets. However, the NRL are confident that the Queensland Government will relax its laws and those three players will be allowed to train and play again shortly. But for now, it has been confirmed that they are stood down. Project Apollo, the NRL's team of experts, has been meeting here at NRL headquarters in Sydney today. The most pressing issue being discussed is the flu vaccination. Some 20 players have refused to receive the jab, some on religious ground, but others, such as Gold Coast Titans' Bryce Cartwright and Manly's Dylan Walker, believe players should be given a choice on whether they receive the jab or not. Off the back of these comments, the ARL Commission Chairman Peter Volandis made it very clear if a player does not accept the flu jab, then they must sign a waiver before being allowed to play. And pressure is mounting. The Prime Minister Scott Morrison leads a chorus line of voices calling on the NRL to adopt a no jab, no play policy. I agree with the Prime Minister. Um, the health advice is that they should have uh, a flu injection. It comes back to that safety issue and it, if they think it is a, a really important point, I would support the NRL. We are now waiting for Peter Volandis or another member of Project Apollo to address the media this afternoon to give greater clarity on the topic. We have bombshell developments in the inquiry into the Ruby Princess cruise crisis. For the first time, Carnival Australia has admitted giving wrong information to authorities trying to assess the extent of the coronavirus infection on board. Robert Avadia has been following the story. Rob, what was said in the inquiry today? Well, much of the inquiry today was dedicated to the interpretation of the term suspected COVID-19 cases. How well that was conveyed from Carnival Australia to authorities versus how well authorities interpreted what was conveyed as Ruby Princess approached landfall on March 18 and 19. A Carnival's lawyers pointed to an email on March 18, a day before docking, advising 15 samples taken for possible COVID-19 were being sent to a New South Wales laboratory. Ports Authority employee Cameron Butchart testified he was aware of a new policy once a pandemic had been declared. Carnival also pointed to two patients who were expedited off the ship as soon as it docked at 2.30am, advising they could be infectious, the suggestion being it was transparent about the number of sick on board. Equally, there is evidence from another Ports Authority employee who suggested Carnival lied before it embarked on that ill-fated trip on March 8, when it suggested at that time there had been no illness on board when it came into port that day. The inquiry's counsel assisting Richard Beasley SC started the day with an extraordinary attack on the Australian newspaper after an opinion piece suggesting the inquiry is nothing more than a sham to protect the government. He said epidemiologist Kellyanne Ressler's grilling was necessary to get to the heart of the decision-making process. The government ministers have no role to play and confirmed it had sent a letter to the Australian asking why it should not be held in contempt of proceedings for undermining its integrity. Transport Minister Andrew Constance has been stripped of a key government job as the fallout from his aborted tilt for federal politics continues to grow. State political reporter Alex Hart is following the story. Alex, why did the Premier make this decision? And Gladys Berejiklian refused to say that this was punishment when asked this morning, but several government sources have confirmed that this was a demotion for Andrew Constance after his on-again, off-again bid for federal politics this week. The Premier said he would no longer serve as Leader of the House, which is a key position managing government business in Parliament's lower house. He will, though, retain his roads and transport ministries. For now, Attorney-General Mark Speakman will replace him 
in the Leader of the House role. We need to keep our focus and that's my strongest message to all of my colleagues. A number of Mr Constance's Liberal colleagues have told 7 News they want him stripped of his ministries as well. The Premier is planning a reshuffle later in the year post the coronavirus crisis. Labor has gone on the attack. This is a government in complete and utter chaos. It's a government in crisis and it's no wonder why the New South Wales Premier has refused to have a question time next week. It's been a bruising week for both Mr Constance and the Deputy Premier John Barillaro, who also withdrew from the by-election race for Eden Monero. Mr Barillaro says the two do remain friends despite reports that he used an expletive to describe his Cabinet colleague. It's very easy to pick on politicians, but at the end of the day, uh, we're just as vulnerable as anybody else. Mr Barillaro's supporters have rejected claims that his leadership is under threat, saying the party room still backs him 100%. Ange. Meteorologist David Brown joins us now. Good afternoon, Brownie. What's the latest on the weather front? Oh, Ange, look, it's a beautiful afternoon across our city, as we can see. In fact, our current conditions at the moment, temperature sitting on 27 degrees, while the wind, it's a moderate northerly. In fact, a northerly airstream dominates our state today under a blue sky. But look, having said that, atmospheric pressure is now starting to fall statewide. Yes, there is a change on the way. As we go to the forecast chart, we can see that change approaching from the west tomorrow, pushed along by rather cold west to southwesterly winds. The system is expected to bring snow to the southern ranges. Can you believe it? Yes, and it's only early May. Uh, falls above 1,200 metres, potentially up to 20 centimetres is possible. Back home, warm conditions tomorrow ahead of that change, but becoming unsettled in the afternoon clouds starting to build we might see a few showers and possibly a thunderstorm in the outer west especially over the blue mountains but at the moment it's warm in Penrith sitting on 27 degrees Liverpool it's 26 weekend weather in detail top of the hour and okay thanks Brownie still to come in Sydney's afternoon news on seven an urgent coronavirus scare in the White House Donald Trump caught in the middle of it Europe begins to roll back restrictions, so when will international travel be back on the cards? And opening cafes, restaurants, bars and beauty salons, we break down the timeline for our road out of the coronavirus crisis. That's coming up. The most unique Mother's Day we've ever experienced needs a fresh new way to celebrate. From a new type of rose for mum, the meals that'll make her mouth water, to new mums with the cutest fur babies you'll ever meet. The best Mother's Day ideas are on New Better Homes, tonight on 7. A lot has changed over the last few months, but globally, Allianz Group's commitment to serving its 100 million customers around the world hasn't. As part of this network, Allianz Australia has been supporting our customers through uncertainty and change for over a hundred years. So you can rely on us to be here for you now and in the future to ensure what matters most. Because our support doesn't stop here. This Saturday with Sportsbet, get the best payout across all three tabs with Top Toad Exotics. Nail a Quinella, Trifecta or even the Quaddy and you'll get the biggest return. Top Toad Exotics from Sportsbet. Centrum provides multiple health benefits in just one tablet. Centrum, complete from A to Z. What if I get coronavirus? How do I do my rehab now? Why is it so hard to get out of bed? COVID-19 is impacting us all differently, which is why we've introduced Medibank COVID-19 Health Assist. With direct access to hundreds of healthcare experts, eligible members can receive health advice and support from their homes at no extra cost. Visit medibank.com.au to see how we're providing better support for our members.
infused oil deluxe crisps from Red Rock Deli. Oh, hi, sweetie. Hi, Mum. Mars. Enough chocolate to deal with anything. Oh, it's very good. Unpolished beauty. It defines our country, our products, our people. And at Stratco, we're proud of it. Because these calloused hands show our expertise is earned. From decades of custom crafting, roofing and cladding solutions for remarkable Australian homes. Colourbond Steel's stunning matte finish. Brought to life by Stratco. You bring the dream, Stratco will bring the how-to. As credit to you, here's up to $120 credit from us. Add any selected month-to-month -month mobile plan with Vodafone and get the credit you deserve over 12 months. Find out more at vodafone.com.au. Ready? You're watching 7's 4pm Sydney News and this is the view from Katoomba. Right now, it's 14 degrees. A coronavirus scare has hit the White House. A staff member in the West Wing has tested positive, forcing the President and Vice President to undergo urgent checks. Paul Kadak has more from New York. Paul, it's close to home for the President. Good afternoon. A scare for Donald Trump with the first confirmed case of coronavirus from someone who works inside the West Wing of the White House. It was a US Navy member who serves as a personal valet to the president. He turned up for work yesterday showing symptoms. A test confirmed he had COVID-19. Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence were themselves tested soon after and both found to still be negative. But it certainly has caused some alarm within the White House. Donald Trump said to have been upset at hearing about the diagnosis. Now, valets bring food and drinks to the president, carry out other personal tasks. They're in close contact with him, the vice president, the first family, and they're in and out of the Oval Office and the residence fairly regularly. And as we now know, you can be contagious with COVID before you show symptoms. But uh, we, we uh, I've had very little uh, contact, personal contact with this gentleman. Uh, know who he is, good person, but I've had very little contact. Mike has had very little contact with him. Uh, but Mike was tested and I was tested. We were both tested. Yeah, it's a little bit strange, but uh, it's one of those things. But we all, I've always said testing is somewhat overrated because what happens after somebody takes a test? What's going on there? Now, instead of every week, White House staff will, like the president, be tested every day. The bad news for the president and the whole country continues on the economic front today with another three million people filing for unemployment last week, which means 33 and a half million Americans have now lost their jobs because of the pandemic. From New York, it's back to you. Donald Trump's former national security adviser Mike Flynn has had criminal charges against him dropped. Flynn had previously pleaded guilty to lying in an FBI interview about conversations he'd had with the Russian ambassador over US election interference. Justice officials dismissed the charges, ruling the interview was conducted illegitimately. Italy has entered phase two of its COVID recovery, easing restrictions and sending four and a half million people back to work. In 10 days, retail stores will be able to reopen along with bars and restaurants. But 90% of hotels are still closed. Tourism bosses are scrambling to work out a code of practice that will get them up and running. There's still no timeline for borders to be reopened to international travellers. Here's one for the adrenaline junkies. A theme park in China has unveiled a 100-metre swing resting over the edge of a 700-metre cliff. The park operators are planning to apply for the world record for the largest swing. They say its sturdy frame can withstand a magnitude 10 earthquake. Next in Seven's Afternoon News, an urgent warning for Australians trying to treat themselves for COVID-19. Plus, landmark changes coming to your suburb to help with easing coronavirus restrictions. They should keep us safe, but there's concerns they'll cause major headaches for your return to work. And in sport with Jim Wilson, more on the vaccination dramas for the NRL ahead of its proposed restart. Tonight on 7 News with Michael Usher. The step-by-step -step guide to lockdown recovery. Why the Premier is standing firm on restrictions and incredible accounts from our World War II veterans. Tonight on 7 News at 6. The racing is 
back. Elected a half in front. He thrashes it, takes the lead. See it all Saturday, live and free on 7. This year has been hard for all Australians, leaving many feeling scared, anxious and uncertain about the future. So imagine how much harder it is for homeless and vulnerable Australians who don't have ways to protect themselves. When you donate to Mission Australia, you're investing a seed of hope in Australia's most vulnerable. It may be somebody close to you or someone you know. There's never been a more important time to support them. Donate now at missionaustralia.com.au. This Saturday with Sportsbet, get the best payout across all three tabs with Top Tone Exotics. Nail a Quinella, Trifecta or even a Quaddy and you'll get the biggest return. Top Tone Exotics from Sportsbet. Telfast knows that hay fever can strike at any time. It works fast to relieve allergy symptoms like watery eyes, a runny nose and sneezing. Nothing beats Telfast for staying alert and focused when hay fever strikes. Having a home to feel safe in has never felt more important. And with Home Loan Know How from your local Rams Home Loan Specialist, we can help you feel supported wherever you are on your home buying journey. At Rams, whether you're starting out or refinancing, we're here for you every step of the way. Rams, greater together. Come home to stylish winter living. Shop Beacon's stunning new designs and get 30% off your second item. Mix and match anything from our entire range and get 30% off your second. Sale on now. Being stuck at home doesn't have to mean being stuck for things to do. Because if you take a look around, there's inspiration everywhere. All you need to do is repurpose, Reuse, recycle, and reacquaint yourself with the simple pleasure of play. Ryobi One Plus. One Plus U equals endless possibilities. Available at bunnings.com.au. family together. Introducing Optus Family Plan with four sims and 250 gigs of data to share. What's the bet today? Wait, don't answer that, because punters built a race predictor, so you don't have to build a race predictor. Just tweak the form factors that matter to you, and it shows every horse's chance of winning. Download the punters app today. Know when to stop, don't go over the top. Gamble responsibly. The government is urging Australians not to import anti-malaria drugs following a spike in detection by Border Force officials. At least 6,000 tablets of the drug hydroxychloroquine have been intercepted since January. The prescription-only drug is approved to treat the mosquito-borne disease. It was initially flagged as a potential treatment for COVID-19, but subsequent trials have proved largely ineffective. Time for Sport Now with Jim Wilson and governments apply the pressure on the NRL. They have, Ange. Good afternoon to you. Afternoon, everyone. The Queensland government's health minister has stepped in and three Titans players have been stood down for not having the flu vaccinations. The NRL has left the door open for the players who are refusing to have a flu vax. Those players will have to sign a revised vaccination waiver release, allowing them to continue to train and play. Now, the New South Wales government is satisfied with the NRL's vaccine protocols. The key is that everybody has to uh, comply with the health rules. So whatever plan any organisation has signed up to, they've got to stick to the letter of the law. Titans coach Justin Holbrook says he'll support the government's decision despite running the risk of losing forward Bryce Cartwright, who's refusing to have a flu injection. I'm OK with whatever it is. If it gets changed in any area, whether it be through the, through the vaccination or whether through when we can go to contact training or not, it's, 
it's the experts who are making the right decisions and, and we've just got to be compliant with it. Now, just in some breaking news on the Titans, Nathan Peets is one of those players who refused to have the vaccination. He's now having the flu jab this afternoon. He's one of those three players stood down. The NRL says 97% of its players have had the flu vax. The Bulldogs have expressed interest in luring favourite son Josh Reynolds back to Belmore from the West Tigers, while Kieran Foran's big test will come once contact training resumes next week in his quest to return for the Bulldogs in round three. He'll jump into some you know, more intensive training over the next um, you know, couple of weeks. So uh, that'll have a big bearing on whether he comes back in the next round of footing or not. The Dragons remain committed to Jack DeBellin, declaring he's still a part of their top 30 squad. DeBellin's rape trial has been delayed to early next month. The Adelaide Crows face heavy sanctions from the AFL for breaching quarantine protocols at a training camp at the Barossa Valley in South Australia. 16 players are completing mandatory 14-day isolation in the Barossa, but they were spotted training in groups of eight at an adjoining golf course. The Crows called it an honest mistake. We got it wrong. There was no intention for them to be training as a group. Um, unfortunately, the fact that they were, they were too close meant um, you know, it looked like a training session. The AFL Commission hopes players will be cleared to train in groups of 10 by next week. Swans co-captain Luke Parker hopes they're back in group training sessions within two to three weeks. Today, he was helping deliver community care packages at the Wayside Chapel's Heart Cafe in Bondi. It's a great cause, this. It's part of the Play for Lives campaign, where sports people are filling the void for volunteers who can't do their usual work. Any time we can, we can help out communities where we can and people less fortunate in a, a position where I'm able to play sport for a living, it's a great opportunity to jump at. Yeah, well done, Luke, for getting on board with the Wayside Chapel. For now, the Swans are training solo or in pairs like star forward Sam Reid and young gun Nick Blakey this morning. Some big races around the country tomorrow and you'll see them right here on 7, along with Adelaide, Melbourne and Brisbane in coming weeks. 7 will also broadcast all Sydney races for the next six Saturdays, including tomorrow's meeting at Royal Ramwick. It was a hard thing to do to get all the racing jurisdictions to come together, but it has happened, so it's a real breakthrough in a way to have Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide for the next two weeks and then Brisbane coming in with their carnival. Bruce is excited, as we all are, and the t Bruce and the team will start our coverage tomorrow morning on 7-2 from 11.30, and then right here on 7 from midday. Terrific to see racing in Sydney on 7. Plenty more sport coming your way, Ange, in 7 News at 6 o'clock. OK, thanks, Tim. OK. Don't go anywhere. Our top stories are just ahead. When will you be able to go to restaurants or catch a flight interstate? We have the answers to all your questions on the PM's road out of coronavirus lockdowns. The government to make big changes to your suburb to help with social distancing, but some are likely to be pretty inconvenient. How your grocery shop is about to get much easier and why it's going to be very hard to get flowers this Mother's Day. Next week, look who lands in the bay. A darkness is coming. He brings trouble. He's your brother. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here too. Is his past catching up with him? Tane's caught up in a life when it landed me in jail and my brother did. I'll land on my feet as always. You see him anyway. Actually, I'm not seeing you. Not that that's any of your business. Maybe I'll see you around, yeah? Yeah, maybe. Home and Away, next week on 7. Massell, proudly Australian made and owned for 38 years. When cold and flu symptoms strike, a kiss can make them feel better. But for effective relief through the night, there's Nurofen for children. Starts to reduce fever from 15 minutes and lasts for up to eight hours. Nurofen for children. Telstra's smart modem is backed up by Australia's best 4G network. So if the connection to your house stops, your home Wi-Fi won't. Experience better Wi-Fi with Telstra. You can open it now. Happy Mother's Day! Oh, thanks, love. Look what Amy got me. Be Mum's instant favourite with instant scratches. Have you two muted? We remain dedicated to helping Australians. We've introduced a help program with a range of relief options to assist customers currently in need. Call us to find out how we can tailor help options for you. 
If you're looking for a simple home loan with a great low rate, then walk this way. With a Rams Essential Home Loan, you can enjoy both. Backed by our famous silver service. Rams, greater together. If dry or flaky skin is causing you frustration and embarrassment, try E45 Cream. It soothes and relieves by creating an effective barrier to protect against skin dryness. Feel comfortable in your skin. Switch to E45. Does your energy provider chip in for your internet? Dodo does. Yep, we're an energy company and an internet company, which is why you get unlimited data on our NBN 50 plant for just 60 bucks a month when you also get electricity and gas. Switch at dodo.com. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Angela Cox. Welcome back to our Mutton Place headquarters. These are our top stories on 7. Today marks the beginning of the end of lockdown measures in Australia. We have more on what it means for you just ahead. Three NRL players have been stood down after refusing to get the flu vaccine. Carnival Australia has admitted giving wrong information to authorities during the Ruby Princess crisis. And still to come, international shipping plays havoc with Mother's Day plans. Why it could make it hard to get flowers this weekend. It's the announcement we've all been waiting for. The Prime Minister has given states the green light to begin easing coronavirus restrictions. It marks a turning point in our fight against the virus as we begin a new chapter and look towards a return to normal. Chart in hand, the Prime Minister lays the groundwork for our road back to a COVID-safe Australia. We are successfully making our way through this difficult battle. Mr Morrison unveiling a three-step framework to navigate the way forward. And this is what it will look like. Phase one will see five visitors allowed at a home, ten in public places. You will also see small restaurants, cafes and retail shops open only if they can implement sufficient distancing measures. Playgrounds and outdoor boot camps will also open. As part of phase two, gyms, beauty salons, cinemas and museums will come out of hibernation with 20 people allowed to gather. The final stage will see a far broader relaxation of rules. Up to 100 able to congregate, food courts, saunas and bathhouses will open while our interstate border restrictions will begin to fall away. Each stage will be spaced at least four weeks apart aiming for significant economic reprieve by the end of July. But the Prime Minister has warned his plan is not without risk. There will be challenges, there will be outbreaks, there will be more cases, there will be setbacks. And while the framework is clear, it will be up to each state to implement it, meaning key points could vary depending on where you live. States will and must move at their own pace and will cut and paste out of this plan to suit their local circumstances. Christian Galpset, 7 News. The federal government's announcement was music to the ears of retailers across Sydney desperate to get back to business. Serena and Aloro has more. Serena, the panic buying has subsided as supermarkets lift trading limits. Well, Ange, there's a toilet paper surplus. That's a sure sign things are slowly returning to normal. Woolworths reporting toilet paper sales have dropped by 4 million rolls last week. The supermarket returning to normal trading hours from Monday, phasing out product restrictions and community hour. Local restaurants and cafes applauding the news from the Prime Minister today. They're clear to reopen when the New South Wales government gives them the go-ahead. It's great news the PM announced that about 10 people can come and dine now, so it just, it just gives us a bit of a fighting chance. From this weekend, Maya is reopening two stores in Sydney, Liverpool and Bankstown. Now, Maya was the only major retailer to shut down. David Jones, Big W, Target, Kmart have all kept trading. The sector crippled by tanking sales. The difficulty for us is that we saw 21 major trains close their doors um, prior to COVID-19. So we certainly anticipate that we are going to see more closures. We are going to see national brands close. Despite restrictions easing, some say the hardest times are still to come for the retail sector. Government payments like JobKeeper offering struggling companies a few months of life support, according to some, which will wear off around September. The government has unveiled a $15 million plan to make more space for Sydney siders to exercise. 
But as Tom Saker reports, it could have a major impact on traffic congestion. The government says the answer to social distancing during the COVID-19 pandemic is more footpaths and it's giving $15 million to councils around Sydney to pedestrianise shared spaces, including the park here in Parramatta. Under the plan, cars wouldn't be allowed in Parramatta Park, only cyclists and pedestrians. Other spaces earmarked for more shared footpath space include an extension of the car-free zone on George Street in the city between Campbell and Bathurst Streets and public furniture will be added to parts of Liverpool. That will include trees, bollards and park benches, even though sitting down outside is still considered illegal. Our roadways are owned by everyone and we have an obligation as government, both state and local, uh, to make them safe and accessible for everyone. The Bay Run in Haberfield and Lilyfield is also being considered for pedestrianisation. The plan already has its critics with questions being raised about how much it will impact on Sydney traffic. A global city like Sydney will always be a car-based city. That's the reality of it. We have to remember that a lot of people still rely on good quality roads to get around and about Sydney. To even if cyclists and pedestrians could enjoy more space here in Parramatta Park, they'd have to fight for car spots outside the gates just to get in. A former finance manager has been charged with defrauding a wealthy Sydney school of almost $7.5 million. Andrew Denny is following the story. Andrew, at which school was he employed? Well, it was at the exclusive Mariah College here in Sydney's eastern suburbs that an extraordinary fraud is alleged to have taken place. Augustine Nosti worked as the school's long-time financial controller, but after leaving the job last year, the board brought in forensic accountants who allegedly uncovered staggering discrepancies, totalling $7.4 million. Yesterday, police laid criminal charges against him. They say the 57-year-old had been transferring the Jewish school's money to his own accounts over a period of more than a decade. So there were 402 separate transactions over the 15-year period and they ranged from $2,000 through to $241,000 was the largest transaction. Now the school did contact parents last year when they discovered the alleged fraud and has already begun civil proceedings against him to try to recover the debts. It's obviously a very disappointing for the, the school that they've employed somebody for such a long time who has taken advantage of of the money. Nosti has been granted strict conditional bail and will front court in July. A gas technician has been fined $100,000 for a deadly hospital mix-up that claimed the life of one newborn and left another permanently disabled. Brian Seymour is covering this story for us. Brian, what does today's sentence mean for these devastated families? Yes, Ange, some closure today for the Khan and Ganem families, although really no comfort or help in dealing with what was such a tragic and preventable mistake. Instead of oxygen, newborns John Ganem and Amelia Khan were given toxic nitrous oxide or laughing gas at Bankstown Lidcombe Hospital in 2016 due to the gas connections not being checked by the subcontractor who installed them. Baby John died, baby Amelia suffered brain damage, blindness and epilepsy. She'll need care for the rest of her life. The extent of the harm caused is almost too awful to contemplate. In 43 years, as a barrister and then a judge, I cannot think of a more tragic case. Today, Christopher Turner was sentenced for falsely claiming he had checked the gas outlets and fined $100,000. Last week, BOC Gas was found not guilty in relation to these deaths, which triggered a statewide audit of all gas fixtures in New South Wales health facilities too late for these devastated families. It would be understandable if both families think that the penalty imposed is inadequate. No one should have to suffer such grief and loss. 58-year-old Turner was also ordered to pay legal costs of up to $150,000, but it's a life sentence for the Ganem and Khan families as they try to find a way to live with this terrible loss. A special direct flight from India has arrived in Sydney, packed with Australians escaping the COVID crisis there. Chris Ma is at Sydney Airport. Chris, tickets for those flights sold out in minutes. Well, 500 Australians are being returned home today and over the weekend from India in special federal government chartered flights. The three scheduled Qantas flights began arriving this morning, one in Sydney, another in Melbourne. 
the last one on Sunday. It's bringing back short-term visitors to India and those considered vulnerable. The tickets for seats were in hot demand, selling out in just 10 minutes. Those repatriated say they are relieved to return home with the situation in India deteriorating. Now they are being placed in quarantine, of course, in Sydney hotels, with confirmation today that since the end of March, 13,000 people have been housed that way. Today, the Premier was unable to put a cost on that, but paid tribute to the hotel staff involved. For really stepping up and allowing us to undertake this mammoth job. An incredibly big thank you to all of the hotel staff that have been involved in this program. We've, for all intents and purposes, turned you into our front line. The Premier says the government is footing the bill for what is effectively border control. The state's been bearing the cost, even though border protection isn't our responsibility. The Premier says there are no regrets on the spending for Sydney Hotel, says it's part of keeping the state safe. The Duchess of Cambridge has given us a rare television interview opening up about life in isolation. Speaking on British Morning TV, Kate gave us insight into what it's like homeschooling a prince and princess. George gets very upset because he just wants to do all of Charlotte's projects, like making sort of spider sandwiches as far cooler than doing literacy work. Yes. She's also encouraging the public to capture the faces and moments of the lockdown as part of a project called Hold Still, which will eventually become an exhibition. We're live to Comsec for the latest on your money next, then getting tested for COVID-19. What exactly does the process involve? Plus, why the government has suspended your early access to super. And it's 23 degrees in Bondi. Brownie has Sydney's forecast zone. It's going to knock you off your feet. Tiger King shocked the world. But you only heard half the story. Air of snitches. The key players uncensored. I wish I could have done more, Tim. Shocking footage exposed. Our burning questions answered. He was killed. The exclusive Tiger King. What really went down? Shh. Tuesday, 7.30, only on 7. Some modems emit Wi-Fi a bit like this. But a Telstra smart modem targets your device for faster Wi-Fi. Experience better Wi-Fi with Telstra. What's the bet today? Wait, don't answer that, because punters built a race predictor. So you don't have to build a race predictor. Just tweak the form factors that matter to you, and it shows every horse's chance of winning. Download the punters app today. Know when to stop, don't go over the top. Gamble responsibly. With Light and Easy, you can enjoy delicious, healthy meals with the safety of their contactless delivery service. In fact, Light and Easy has recently been rated Australia's number one healthy meal delivery service for customer satisfaction. Order today. When a cold disturbs your family's sleep, Vicks Vapor Rub relieves cough, nasal congestion, muscle aches and pains. They sleep, you sleep. Vicks Vapor Rub relieves four cough and cold symptoms. The game that makes the most millionaires is giving you 20 million more reasons to get super excited this Saturday. Lotto's $20 million Super Draw Saturday. Play now in-store at thelot.com or the Lot app. There are two ways to choose a new SUV. Old thinking, buy what you've always bought. New thinking, buy one on merit, like the Havel H2. Old, pay a lot more for premium features. New, seven-year warranty, panoramic sunroof, Apple CarPlay and more for your money. Old, low price means less quality. New, German engineering, Swedish safety tech and European design. Havel H2 Auto. New car thinking from 22,990. Right now, the comfort of our home has never been more important. So it's good to know that at Fantastic Furniture, you can shop our entire range in store or online. Now with contactless delivery and click and collect services. Find your Fantastic today. What's happening now, Detective? They're still there. You would have thought they'd moved out by now. Got themselves a little unit somewhere. Call us today to find out more about a reverse mortgage from Heartland. Heartland Seniors Finance. Save up to 10% on your first year's premium when you get a new Allianz home insurance policy online. OK, done. Uh... Uh... Get that? Leon's feeling. Search for a quote today. The incredible...
incredible true story. Trying to put a man into space, sir. Of three remarkable women who helped make history. Hidden figures, tonight on 7. The government's early access super scheme has been temporarily suspended because of fraudulent claims. The AFP fears up to 150 people have lost $120,000 all up due to identity theft. The police commissioner believes the sophisticated breach could be linked to crime groups or international syndicates. The scheme has been paused while police complete their investigation. Checking finance now with James Tao at Comsec. James, how did our share market round out the week? Yeah, good afternoon, Ange. It was a pretty solid finish to the week. We had the Aussie market snapping two days of losses, ending high by around 27 points for the ASX 200. Uh, it's a half of 1%, and also higher over the course of the week as well. So that makes it six of the past seven weeks where we've seen the Aussie market lifting. And this is all in the face, of course, of the uh, economic uncertainties uh, around the spread of coronavirus. So what we saw today was some pretty broad-based gains on our market. Uh, a number of the financials and also mining stocks really helped push the market broadly higher though. So we had uh, Fortescue Metals lifting more than 5% today. Macquarie Group, the investment bank, also are lifting more than 5% after announcing its full year profit results this morning. Some of our retailers also had a pretty solid session as shops start to reopen and the Aussie dollar also higher, buying 65.3 US cents. Okay, James Tower from Comsec, thank you. It is the testing process that can tell you whether you're positive for coronavirus. And now we can show you just what happens. Evan Batten is at Macquarie Park. Evan, labs have been swamped. Well, Angela, we've been given rare access to one of the busiest labs in the country where they're testing for coronavirus. And it all starts right here behind me at one of the many pop-up centres that we've seen emerge right across the country over the last few weeks. And from here, the samples are taken inside the lab where really complex set of analytical work is done and ultimately the samples are tested and results are determined within about 24 hours they're doing it on average now you can imagine the staff here at Douglas Hanley Moyer for one have been run off their feet extremely busy um, there's been all hands on deck all the staff have really stepped up and um, I guess everyone just remembers as a patient at the end we're eagerly awaiting their results if you can compare it with uh, peak flu season we've had some very big flu seasons in the last few years uh, I'd say it's been double those numbers Angela as well at six o'clock we will have for you the details of the multiple different methods that they now have for testing for coronavirus we'll also have a look at the extra equipment that, that they've had to bring in plus the warning for tens of thousands of other Australians who may be at risk of serious complications for other conditions Angela to breaking news now and Premier Gladys Berejiklian has just released a statement confirming there will be no changes to restrictions in the coming week. She says New South Wales welcomes the framework for the further easing of restrictions endorsed by the National Cabinet and that the framework provides a clear pathway to what citizens can look forward to in coming months. Sydney 6pm News is coming up with Michael Usher. Hi Michael, yeah. what are you working on in the newsroom? Hello there, Ange. Well, here's what we have for you tonight. The Prime Minister obviously has outlined that three-step plan to take the country forward and get Australians back on their feet. Tonight, from restaurants opening to getting back in the gym, how the country will change over the next few months. Plus, as you just heard then, our Premier is still standing firm on keeping restrictions in place. What needs to happen for them to be relaxed in New South Wales? Bombshell admission from Carnival Australia on how it handled the Ruby Princess disaster. The company's bosses have been grilled over their knowledge of the trouble on board. Donald Trump swamped what led to a close call in the West Wing. And incredible video accounts from our World War II veterans recalling the moment victory was declared in Europe. That was 75 years ago. So, and we'll have that for you. Plenty more, of course, coming up in Sydney 7 News at 6 o'clock. OK, thanks so much, Michael. It's 4.48. Let's get a check on Sydney's traffic. Good afternoon, Marina Ivanovic here in the Hills Nursing Traffic Chopper. We're seeing a very heavy run through Rose Hill. A car's broken down for James Roost Drive as you head southbound. And just having a look through Auburn for Parramatta Road. Extensive delays both ways from an earlier truck and car smash. Do you have a home care package? Thinking of moving from your current provider? Call Hills Nursing on 1300 13 13 93 or visit hillsnursing.com.au and a friendly reminder to wear gloves when filling up at the petrol station. 
Australians are preparing for a very different Mother's Day this year. Restrictions mean the traditional big gatherings won't be on the cards, but that hasn't stopped plans to spoil mum. Christy Ma has more. The pandemic has made Mother's Day preparations a little more challenging than usual this year, but families and businesses are doing what they can to make mum's big day a special one. Planters and gardening. Gardening bits and pieces, so secateurs, gloves, garden pots, books on plants and of course always body care. Home delivered hampers are proving a very popular choice along with the classic favourite fresh flowers. Although some blooms are in short supply this year, around 90% of Australia's roses are imported from Africa and South America and those imports stopped before Easter. Instead of selling your roses, you know, people are going for your traditional disbuds, um, which are chrysanthemums, your lilies, um, your cyclamens. Around the country, online orders have soared by up to 80%. Australia Post recorded a big spike on Monday to make the cutoff for delivery by this weekend. That's about a million new customers into online this year compared to April last year. We've seen fashion come back very hard in the last couple of weeks. Um, a lot of pyjamas. Many families battling cancer have also received a special knock on the door today with a delicious gift for those mums organised by charity Koala Kids. Home cooking and arts and crafts have also made a big comeback during isolation and there are many reports today that those handmade gifts will again be the most precious. Next in Seven's Afternoon News, David Brown is here with your latest forecast. David, I'm signing you to the Home Secretary. Very good, Mum. Pleasure to meet you, Mum. I'm late for a meeting. She's got an agenda to heighten fear, to seize power. I don't need you to vote for me. I need to protect me. These plots do not always arise from outside. She's got you wrapped around her finger. This is a very dangerous politician. He's been an inside man all along. Looks like the Home Secretary couldn't be in safer hands. The must-see event. Bodyguard coming to seven. Definitely. Wow. Yes. yes. I want a slice of that. Get in my mouth, please. Oh. Telstra's smart modem cleverly switches Wi-Fi frequencies when you're further away for a strong connection to maximize your range. Experience better Wi-Fi with Telstra. We know you've always worked hard for your money. In these uncertain economic times, who do you trust to protect your wealth? Invest with Latrobe Financial, Australia's multi-award winning wealth manager and leading credit specialist. Trusted by Australians for more than 60 years. I always thought it was me, that I was the reason diets didn't work. I thought I had no willpower. Noom helped me see it's all about what's happening in my head. It's not just black and white, don't eat this, don't eat that. There's some serious psychology behind it. It's not just a, about weight loss, it's about a lifestyle change. I've lost a stone and a half in four months and I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm down 10 kilos and I feel like I'm finally in control. Change your thinking, change your habits, change your life with Noom. Hello Fresh, delicious meals delivered to your door with pre-portioned fresh ingredients. Now you can focus on what's really important. Order your box today. Hello Fresh, inspiration delivered. Introducing Same Race Multi from Ladbrokes. Combine picks from the same race to get even greater odds. Available now on Thoroughbred and Greyhound Races. Ladbrokes, back yourself. Definitely. Wow. Yes. yes. I want a slice of that. Get in my mouth, please. To win the chase requires a world of knowledge. Ricky V. Rock. Antarctica. Cape Town. Mexico City. But with such high stakes, all it takes is one mistake. The black drongo is a bird species native to which continent? Stop the clock. You're flaming drongo. New The Chase, weekdays at 5 on 7. This weather report brought to you by Bridgestone Select for tyres and car servicing. 
There's always one place you can turn to for answers. What you need to know right now to be ready for tomorrow. Turn to 7 News. Stargazers have witnessed the final supermoon of 2020. The phenomenon lit up skies across Australia last night with amateur photographers capturing its beauty. A supermoon is when a full moon is closest to Earth. This one was a flower supermoon named because flowers wilt in autumn. David is back now with the latest forecast. Good afternoon, Brownie. Learn something all the time, don't we, Ange? Yes, good afternoon. Warm and sunny today, just a gentle northerly breeze. Quite a spectacle, in fact, for this time of year. The official high, a warm 28.5 degrees. And by the way, that's about 8 degrees on the high side of normal. Statewide at the moment, quite chilly in orange. It's uh, sitting on 16 degrees. You'll notice Newcastle, it's 25 degrees. In the gong, it's currently 22. To the satellite, a change is approaching our state. We can see that uh, active system now sweeping across the Great Australian Bight. It should enter our state tomorrow morning. And as it moves through, it'll start to spark some patchy rain, mainly along the western slopes of the Great Dividing Range and along the spine of the Great Divide itself. We'll see some thunderstorms in the mix as well and some snow falling over the southern ranges above 1,200 metres. Cold and showery Melbourne tomorrow, of course, in the wake of that change. Only 15 degrees. There'll be some hail as well. On the other side of it, warm air. That's why we're expecting 27 degrees in Brisbane and clear skies for uh, Perth, sunny at around 20 degrees. For our city, this is the forecast for your Saturday, 27 degrees. Now, it will be a fine and partly cloudy day in the city. Having said that, the odd storm is possible in the outer west from around about mid-afternoon. Let's move on to that uh, seven-day outlook now as we have a look at it. Uh, cooler conditions on Sunday, of course. Cool change coming through tomorrow night. That's why the cold air will fill the Sydney Basin tomorrow night. You'll feel it first thing Sunday morning, especially in our west. Look at that, down to seven degrees and a string of very cold mornings to follow. Temperatures close to average for this time of year. Then some coastal showers are expected to unfold, well, later next week from Thursday into Friday, just a few millimetres. So that's the latest weather. Enjoy the warmth while it lasts, Ange. Sure will. OK, thanks, Brownie. And that is Sydney's 4pm news for this Friday. Michael Usher will bring you 7 News at 6. I'm Angela Cox. Stay with 7 now for The Chase Australia. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great night. Goodbye for now.